I became really interested in the growing body of research on adverse childhood experiences and early adversity because I had spent about 10 years both as a patient with autoimmune disease, kind of revolving door patient, trying to sort out what was causing um, this immunological shift in my body. And I also had been reporting as a science journalist on all different types of toxic hits that the body can take. I had written the autoimmune epidemic and the last best cure and all of those looked at the intersection between neuroscience and immunology and and how our immune system can change in ways that lead to later disease. As we look at this groundbreaking public health study on adverse childhood experiences, these categories of stressors, some of them are fairly common. For instance, growing up with a parent who's depressed, alcoholic, or enduring a lot of criticism as a child. These are things that 64% of children grow up with. But what makes adversity in childhood what we call toxic stress and very different from the sort of normal experiences of childhood, it's the combination of the adversity being chronic and unpredictable and a child not having the kind of adult support that they need to get through these types of adversities. People who had experienced certain types of adversity in childhood, 10 different categories, who had a score of three of these different types of adversity or more is related to much higher rates of cardiovascular disease, stroke, migraines, cancer, lung disease, and of course autoimmune disease. So why is this not part of everyday medical practice? We have to think that medicine was really formed in the idea that you would look only at what you could see or look at in a lab report or under a microscope. And this idea of bringing psychiatry into the exam room goes very much against the way in which physicians are trained in medical school. The fact that adverse childhood experience research is still not taught in the vast majority of medical schools is something that public health researchers are looking at very closely. And there are few pockets of change in some very innovative programs that are starting to train young medical students to look at early adversity as a public health problem.